I'm Warren Rippin, and uh, well, I own this. I own Buffalo Kloof. Well, Buffalo Kloof was started in 1999. Slowly but surely, we sort of got this this idea in my head to maybe try and expand this into like a, a bigger reserve, you know, with free ranging animals and possibly a big five destination for ecotourism, for hunting, whatever we want to do. And it's kind of evolved from there, you know. It actually was historically our sort of family lodge. It's called Speckworm after the iconic uh, Speckworm carbon eating plant. And it's just a wonderful African experience. A bush camp, rough, but it's in Africa, it's in the bush, there's no fences. Animals can walk right through the, 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 the camp at night. The seedlings tree. We've got 32 different types of species, from the little, the magnificent, uh, the tiny ten to the, the big five, basically. You, know, um, so you can get elephant, black rhino, white rhino, hippopotamus, uh, buffalo, kudu. Blue darkers, little antelopes that you know, guys don't even know about really. You know? And obviously the bird life, over 450 bird species here. Yeah. Over the years we've obviously introduced a lot of different species. And recently we've introduced all the keystone species like the black rhino, uh, white rhinos. We've tried to habituate some leopard that have been in trouble. We've moved some of the animals here and to try and re, re um, habituate them in this area. And encourage them to stay here where it will be safe for them. The, the, the experiences here are phenomenal. I mean, as you just know, we've, we've just now had the most amazing experience with the black rhino. We've got to within 10, 15 meters of a black rhino eating. It is a very, very special property, especially as far as Southern Africa goes, but in the Eastern Cape, I'm not sure if there's many like this. It's got, um, it's got so much diversity. It's got these beautiful rivers. So it's an incredible um, area for, for guys to come visit and do ph photographic work. It's an experience that we're trying to create here that's very, let's call it like a boutique experience, that it's very simplistic, not over the top. So yeah, and, and as we sort of getting more focused on, on um, these new relocations we've done, there's more emphasis now on carbon and looking after these wilderness areas. It's a biome that's got to be protected really and looked after. We've got a lot of this, we call it Albany Thicket, which is one of the great contributors to fighting carbon in the world. Uh, especially the speckworm plant, um, so I call it a miracle worker. If I could have the perfect end to my life, I'd like to breed a hundred black rhino. I don't know if it's possible, I don't know if I'll live that long, but that to me would be a significant uh, contribution to the species and also to this area. Once we've got young calves that need to be notched, rhino notching for identification, then we we get our clients, uh, hunting clients or eco clients, they can they can have an experience of naming a rhino and notching a rhino. It's a wonderful experience to get up close to actually touch one of these animals, you know, and, and hear them breathing and anesthetic. It's quite an extraordinary experience. I still I still am trying to become one of the very few successful. Um, operations that hunt and the and guys come here and do ecotourism to understand that this is how it actually works. Now, I'm not a hunter myself but I like the model of of a very light footprint on the earth. Uh, guys come and hunt, they hunt species that are that breed quickly and with those funds we can help contribute to growing these areas and also to expand this reserve with our partners with which is East Cape Parks. They are very keen for us to extend the reserve to the south, uh, mainly for black rhino and elephants. This is, this is the nuts and bolts of Africa. This is not, you know, these aren't safari parks around the rest of the world or zoos. This is, this is the real thing. So we have to get other people come here to, to utilize these animals, whether it's the meat, whatever. 
that we can fund these type of projects, you know. So the photojournalism sort of opportunities here are endless. So we want to push that and we want to also, and those guys need to be educated that they'll say, well, we're going to go to a hunting farm, but you know what? Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look what they do there and, and, and make a decision after that, you know. Well, us Africans, we don't look after these, these endangered species, especially the, obviously the critically endangered black rhino and then the white rhino and elephant, Cape leopards. We don't look after these animals. Who's going to come visit us? Who's going to come to this continent? So we don't look after our animals. I don't think anybody will have a reason to come here. I don't think uh, this will become a forgotten continent. You know, if I had have told you 10 years ago that I'd have been here and I'd be involved in this project with all these elephant and rhino, I would have said you're crazy. So it's kind of, you know, I'm a big believer in, um, I'm one of those guys that believes in destiny. So these things have happened for a particular reason, whether this is my job to do in life is to look after animals like this and breed them and yeah, that's what it is, so it's good.